Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And I got a really cool project for you guys today. It's something I really recommend you guys doing, which is transcoding all your media. Now I'm gonna be using the Zima board for this. So let's get started. So over the years of doing YouTube, I actually collected a lot of footages. I call them my YouTube archives and I don't delete anything. I'll store them in my NAS and it's over. If I ever needed to use old footages, I can. And keep in mind that these cameras are not great at compression. They don't have a crazy CPU in there to help you encode whatever you need to encode. It's gonna give you the footage that you need. It's gonna be a large file size, especially on these GoPros. These GoPros, these file sizes are extremely large, like there is zero compression on them. So the main thing that I want to tackle today is basically transcoding all my H.264 to H.265, which is a new compression codec, which basically saves 30 to 40% per video file without any loss of quality. Now, originally I wanted to do this on my Raspberry Pi, which I made a video about building that little Raspberry Pi server for transcoding, but it's not efficient. I mean, I couldn't get the graphic card to work. Uh, CPU is just out of the question if you're gonna try to use a CPU to encode. So my next up was the Zima board, and this thing is made for this job. This thing is perfect for this. Not only does this have the SATA ports that you can attach hard drives to if you need to, and you don't wanna do it off the network, you also have a 4X PCIe slot, so you could actually slap on a graphic card to help you transcode faster. Now, I did none of that. I basically basically use the device for what it is because it's got a 9th gen Intel GPU, which basically is a Intel QuickSync that supports H.265 decode and encode. Now it's not overly fast, but the power efficiency to what I'm getting is actually perfect. Now running this guy at full tilt, CPU and GPU is only about 13.4 watts, which is almost next to nothing. And I was able to encode almost 2,500 files in four days, which basically helped me save 500 gigabytes of space in this little package. Now, if you were to add it up, which I did kind of a little roundabout math on this, at 13 watts per hour, or even if I round it off, 13.5 watts per hour, um, in four days, you're looking in about 1,400 watts or 1,300 watts, which is basically pennies. Like for my calculations for the neighborhood that I'm in, say even if I round it up or down because of the peak hours and everything, I'm paying say 15 cents a kilowatt. I'm only paying maybe 20 cents to save 500 gigabytes. So way cheaper than buying a 500 gigabyte or one terabyte hard drive. And I still have tons of files to go. I only did a portion of my YouTube archives. I still have my Nova Spirit gaming channel that I gotta do. I still got my uh, Pandemic Playgrounds video footage and that's a huge folder because when we record sessions, it's usually hours and hours. So if I compress everything over there, I'll probably save up maybe a terabyte or two. Then I still didn't even include some of the other medias that I have. So yeah, if you're looking into saving space and recovering some of the lost hard drive space in your NAS or even in your hard drive, look into transcoding. Another thing about this is because I have all my media files on the network. If you're able to compress everything to H.265, not only will you be having smaller file sizes, you'll be able to stream faster too because of the small file sizes. This is the codec that they use for streaming. So yeah, you're getting really good quality with very low file size. All right, so here we have the TDAR website, which is TDAR.io. And they have a lot of documents and downloads and stuff like that. You should check it out. The documents does help a lot because I actually needed to use it a lot. Heading into the installation part, I'm installing it through Docker, but you can actually install natively without using Docker. Uh, Docker just seemed to be a little bit easier for what I did, but I was able to figure out everything that I needed to through running basically this command. Now I'm gonna leave a, and paste it of actually what my command was uh, because it's directly reflecting the Zima board because we're using Intel instead of NVIDIA or whatnot. But if you wanted to try your own hand at this, um, check out hardware decoding or hardware transcoding. And over here, uh, it will actually show you FFmpeg VAAPI. And ba basically this is what you need to run. Um, not the bottom part, but more of this part, the device dev DRI, that will actually allow you to pass through the VAAPI over to the Docker, allowing you to use the GPU. Now. I'm gonna head over to my Docker itself. So I'm gonna SSH done. And I'm not gonna show you an installation step-by-step step because I'm already, I already have this running in a live environment. But what I am gonna show you is my history of what I did to get this running. Now there are a couple of things here. First off, 
we had to install the VAAPI driver. Depending on the version of your board or the GPU, you might either need the 195, um, not 195, i965VA driver or the VAAPI. In our case, we needed this one. And this will be able to install the VAAPI driver onto your board. Now, the next thing I did install was in, uh, Intel GPU tools, which allows you to actually specify to see if everything is running. So if I do sudo Intel GPU top, it'll actually run this little cool software that is showing that it is rendering. It's currently running live. It's on a live environment right now. So you can see uh, the Intel card, it's running at 600, almost 700 megahertz. It's generation nine and it is rendering uh, 3D right now at 80%. It's actually more when you get out of the software, but during the software when you're running, it's actually, it kind of like slows it down by 15%. So I would not leave this running just to see the stats, but at least you can see that it's actually processing the video and the render and the transcoding and everything through this menu. Control C would get out of this. Now going back to history, again, I will leave the few commands that I'm using, which basically, um, the Intel VA driver, uh, then the i95, depending on what driver you're using. This VLC FFmpeg hardware dash V tells you if the hardware is working for VLC. Now, I just went this route because I wasn't trying the Intel GPU top yet, but installing VLC is like 500 megabytes. And if you don't want to use that up, use that space up, just install Intel GPU tools and it'll tell you if your GPU is working or not. And then last but not least, this Docker command that I have over here. I did run it a few times just to see if I could configure stuff around, but I did manage to get it to work and I'll leave, again, this Docker command that I'm running over here into a paste bin down below. Again, every environment is slightly different. If you're using NVIDIA, because you stick on a graphic card on there to make it transcode faster, this will change and mainly you would have to change the transcoding method to NVIDIA. And with those couple of commands, that will get you all set up to transcode. Check out their documentation. They have a ton of stuff on how to get it, everything set up. I had a little bit of an issue trying to get it set up because I didn't know which way I wanted to go, but eventually I was able to find a, a, the proper command that I needed to get the Docker running with the GPU. All right, so here we are at the dashboard of TDAR. And as you can see, this is the main interface where you could see what's going on. And I gotta be honest, this software is actually not that intuitive. It's not like straightforward how to get it working, et cetera, et cetera. I've tried to manually play with this for a bit and still couldn't figure it out until I had to read the instructions. So I'm gonna try to go through as much as I can through the dashboard to get you guys set up. But there's so much you can do with this that this tutorial actually cannot cover because there's more than what meets the eye, you could say. So first we have the top dashboard which tells you your um, CPU power and the memory. Now this does eat up more than four gigs of RAM. So you do need something around minimum four gigs. And I would recommend eight gigs. That's why the Zima board is like made for this. It has enough RAM to kind of keep this going. Uh, I also have one GPU and one CPU on this system. And I'm using the Intel GPU built in and I'm using one core from the CPU. Now going down here is my nodes. I only have one node, which is the Zima board, but you can add say this desktop or another Windows PC or another, whatever you have, you can add to this and it'll just transfer the work back and forth. So honestly, if you wanted to create some sort of cluster, now if I was able to get the Raspberry Pi working to the way I wanted to, and that became a cluster, that would have been pretty cool to just transcode videos. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work on the Raspberry Pi the way I needed to. Now looking at this, you do have to assign GPU and CPU to this. When you first get this installed, nothing is going, nothing's working. It's just because you didn't assign how much um, CPU or GPU it's allowed to use. Um, so in my internal node, this is where you could assign it. You could just hit one CPU, one GPU. I actually should assign one for health check just to double check the files and stuff for one CPU. But I'm gonna leave this as is for now. And you can see it's actually doing 29 frames per second for this one video file that I'm trying to transcode. It's gonna take 11 minutes to finish this off. And the compression ratio is about 55%. And that is pretty good for this file. Going down here, it actually tells you what it's being processed. These five are being processed right now. These have transcoding errors, which is not a bad thing. It's just, it doesn't know what to do with the file. That's why it pops up before it uh, does something. For example, I have this file and I have a parameter in here, but I have this file that's 2.1 gigabyte original file. 
And when it's transcoded, it only comes out to 47, which is way lower on the percentage than what it should be desired. So it could be corrupted. It could be something. Uh, honestly, right now it's not, but um, it gives you those warnings just to s let you know that, hey, there's something going on with this file. Maybe you should look into it before I move it over or overwrite something. So you can actually re it to have it retranscode. You can have it retry. Um, if you move this over, it also has this thing where you could skip this file and it won't do anything with it, or you can accept. Uh, in most cases, I've already checked these files and they're good. Now, you can actually review the original file and versus the completed file, the cache file, once you have a cache directory set and then it's pointing to somewhere where you know. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but you can review these files to make sure everything is good. In my case, because I am using such an old codec, um, these 2.1 gig to 400 megabyte actually makes sense. So I'm saving tons of space on a lot of these files. The smaller files are the same too. Um, I also just accept everything. So if I go into hit accept, you're gonna see that this will actually load up my CPU. This will actually start flashing maybe, or it might not even go through there. And then I'll just send all these files over to the appropriate directories. Now moving down the list, I actually, I'm going to make this a lot smaller now because I don't need that big. Moving down the list, these are the files still being pending. Like it still hasn't gone through the computer check. It hasn't processed yet. So these are all the files that I'm still being processed and that's the list of it. Now going over to stats, search is really nothing. You could search it for your files, but going through your stats, I have 6,000 video files. And this is all my YouTube archive. So YouTube 2017, 2018, 2019, 2021, and 2020. Uh, I still have more YouTube archives that's not even in this list. So I'm gonna add them a little bit later. But what I did is individually separate each folder because I'm still currently running on 2021 and I don't want it to encode or transcode something that I'm currently working with. So this year I haven't transcoded yet. But you can see I got 6,000 files, 2,500 is, uh, is transcoded. And I've actually saved 452 gigabytes so far. And this is not even halfway yet. It's almost halfway. But um, at the end of this, I'm thinking I'm going to save up to a terabyte of data. And this is just like free space that I have. Technically not free because I have to run the power to run the Zima board. But with the power usage that the Zima board is using and how I have it set up, it's next to nothing. Pennies just to get the space back. It does take a little bit more time. Like I said, I had this running for about the last four or five days and it pumped out about 2,000 files. Now, libraries is where you want to hang out in. This is where I got confused on what I need to do. So I'm gonna show you how to set up at least one um, folder to transcode. Now, I'm gonna add a library and you're gonna add the library name. So I'm gonna do library, oh no, I could do YouTube 2016, okay? I don't have that here yet and it's an older directory. So what I can do here now is actually go into this folder over here and I'm going to select the file. So I'm going to go over to where I have it mounted as media. So I have my network share mounted in media. I'm going to go into my YouTube folder, go into my media. Then I have my years, which is 15 all the way to 22. I'm going to hit 2016 and I have all my months and then that's it. I'm not going to go into individual months. I'm just going to go into the 2016 and I'll do everything underneath that. Next, we have the transcode cache. This is where you want to place what you have in Docker. In my case is temp. So this temp folder goes into the temp folder on my Docker, which allows me to preview the file if something was messed up. I could just go in there and check to see if did it transcode properly or not. Output folder, leave this blank. If you don't, it'll actually move it to another folder, possibly somewhere you might not want or you do want. It depends on how you want to transcode everything. So I just leave this blank so I overwrite the original file that it's trying to transcode. Uh, you have filters over here. So you could actually tell it, hey, anything that's MP4, I don't want it to encode. Or anything that's 720, I don't want it to uh, transcode. Like this is the area where you could put in the filters to say, what do you want to do? Now, this is where it also got confusing, which is the transcoding options. This is a linear process of how you want the files to be transcoded. There is a lot of things that you could do here and they're called plugins. This is the default setup where it takes the image from the file, it removes all the images. So some, some of them has like um, thumbnails built in, which takes like two or three megabytes or whatever it is on that one video file, it will remove it. If you don't want to, you go in and uncheck the enable and it'll leave the thumbnail in there. But it's up to you. 
Then you have the reorder stream. I'm not too sure what this does, um, but I just left it in there. I honestly do not know what this does. Here we have the interesting part. You have transcode using CPU or transcode using NVIDIA. Now I'm not using either. I don't want to use CPU nor NVIDIA because I don't have one on there. So what I ended up having to do is go into community and type in VAAPI, which is the Intel version of their transcoder. And there's a few over here. What I've been using is FFmpeg VAAPI HVAC codec. And I want to transfer everything to HVAC. So I'm going to drag it over to exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm going to disable the CPU. This way it won't use the CPU to transcode. Now it's only going to pick up the GPU. That's when you see on my transcoding list, it says required GPU. That's because it's pending and waiting for this. And then at the end, it will do the new file size check. Now there's an upper bound and a lower bound. The lower bound is 40%. If you change this to 20% or 10% or whatever it is, it will allow the smaller files, like I had the transcoding error, it will allow those to pass through automatically because this is the lower bound. If it's anything under 40%, it's gonna kick back an error. So if I had a one gigabyte file and transcoded it and it's only 400 megabytes, which is 40%, it's gonna be like, oh no, what should we do? Because it's the file size too small. That's what that lower limit is. And that is it. Now, in the community, there's so much more things you can do. So if I say subtitle, there's, you wanna remove the subtitles from MKVs. You can actually find what you need in here and kind of like drag it over. So if I'm looking for something, reorder streams version two, transcode, whatever, uh, reorder subtitles stream, so I'm guessing that reorder stuff. Add, oh, there's, I just missed it, but there was add subtitles to MKVs. You can actually like drag it over and add the subtitles over or remove subtitles and you can remove it. So this is like a full linear process. A lot of these are CPU usages, like remove subtitles is a CPU thing. So you don't, it will actually do it in the background while it's waiting for your GPU. So it's like a lot of cool things you can do. Once you're done with this, you go to options and do scan fresh or uh, find new. It's gonna, either one's gonna work because it's a new folder I just put in. I mean, it'll add this to your stats and it's, the number's gonna go up. Now I'm not gonna do it for 2016 because I know that folder is empty. That actually is uh, on another hard drive. So I'll transfer that over later. But yes, it will add this and then it'll start turning away at the new transcode. Now you have your plugins, which is the same thing we just looked at, but it breaks down with what everything does. So if you are not familiar with how it works, um, what plugin you're trying to do, you can just go to the plugin section and kind of manually look through all the stuff and you can search like how we did the API and there was only like, what, four things. And this is what it does. If not HVAC can tr transcode it to HVAC, uh, video for FFmpeg, Intel QuickSync. Then you have your options. Uh, you could set boundaries and stuff like that. Uh, what's interesting is, where is it? Um, they have this option. I think it's back into libraries. And you could schedule, yeah, it is. You could schedule when you want to transcode. So if you are running this on, say, this PC. So on the Zima board, it's 24 hours. I'm just going to let it turn away and keep doing its thing. But this computer that it's running, I only want it to run at 2 a.m. at night or only Sunday nights. You can actually set it up that way and allow it to just you know, do it only on those uh, specific time frames. That is it for the console, but it's been working great. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it's a game changer when you have something like this transcode everything. I really enjoyed this project. This is like by far the perfect board to be transcoding all your media. Like it's perfect in the wattage. It's got the support to do all the encoding and decoding. It's got all the connection points if you need to slap on hard drives or extra GPUs. Like this was meant to do this, I think. That is it for me guys. If you guys have any questions, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.